It's been a long time since I've been meaning to make a video kind of addressing some of these negative statements that I often get since I've been promoting total gyms and sliding bench training as an ideal form of resistance training. One comment that I think that encapsulates a lot of the negative statements I get is that people will say a total gym is a scam. Uh, the whole idea of you know building muscle using this equipment is kind of a fantasy, that this piece of equipment is nothing but a, just a glorified infomercial fitness device. And some of this is either directly or indirectly pointed at me that either I'm lying or I'm steering my viewers into a subpar form of resistance training. So in this video, I wanna get into kind of these negative comments or concerns dissect them a little bit as to why people feel this way about a total gym. I'll put some links in the description box and timestamps down below if you guys do wanna jump ahead to certain sections. Uh, as always, please consider liking and or subscribing and sharing this content if you guys do find this video helpful. Now I have to say the vast amount of comments that I get on this channel and from personal email are incredibly positive and they continue to grow in number. But I definitely don't need confirmation that these machines work, but certainly it is nice to kinda of hear from many of you guys uh, just how incredibly effective these machines are and the results you guys are receiving. But as you guys can imagine, over the course of putting out so many Total Gym and Sliding Men's training videos, uh, you can kind of imagine some of the negative comments I've kind of received. There is a part of me that is kind of surprised that anyone's gonna take the time or have issue with people using and or promoting any form of exercise that they enjoy. Uh, to me, if someone's promoting anything that gets people moving, I consider that a win, uh, especially considering you know some recent reports about, at least in the United States, how much physical fitness has increasingly even gotten worse. But I really don't think people would have issues if I was like other people that are out there that are kind of promoting this as a nice supplemental machine or something else you can kind of do on like your off day. Uh, but it's basically to the fact that I think that I'm promoting that this is my sole form of resistance training, minus the subtle supplementation of like some other devices like resistance bands, the on and off the machine, or like this new vertical leg press that I've been using a little bit. Uh, but for, for the most part, I kind of find that these machines are superior to free weights for the majority of my resistance training goals, I should say almost all my resistance training goals. And I think this really gets to people. Granted, I've had a lot of you guys who've been kind of converts to what I'm kind of getting at, that maybe initially when I first started making videos, you guys were skeptical, or if I get a lot of new people that jump on that are kind of looking back at older videos, and they kind of have seen my progression as far as I've been sticking with the machine, I've continually used it, I've continued to see results. So there have been a lot of people who are initially were skeptical that eventually have converted over and are full on advocates of sliding bench training. But here are just few of the things that I've kind of heard people say to me when they kind of spout off when they are first presented with the idea more or less that I train exclusively with the total gym. Uh, one is that people will say, well, this is good for like older people, um, like I said, or some form of like supplementation with other exercise modalities. Uh, it's good re for rehabilitation or those who have an injury or some people are working around their own abilities and what they can do, uh, but it's not good as a sole form resistance training. Some people have said to me, if I've heard often, but I've made a whole separate video about this, people will say, well, you kind of built most of your size in traditional means uh, and now your total gym is just kind of more or less kind of building upon what you already started. And again, I think that's kind of false. I made a whole video, like I said, I'll link that down below. Uh, it's been two years since I've been doing this stuff. If anything, I should have been seeing some negative consequences if that was true. And of course, I get the dogmatic statement that you can't build muscle without free weights and that these machines are kind of just limited in the exercises that you can even do in the first place. But I think three things that really summarizes what I think motivates people to say something like a total gym or is a scam, that it doesn't work, is really based on one of and or a combination of these three things. One is just kind of pure ignorance, and that's either in the exercise sciences and or the function of this machine itself. Two is a misunderstanding of the claims made by either myself or maybe Total Gym as a company, other sliding bench trainers, as far as what they can do and what they're ideally used for. And the third one is, I think when people start seeing success built upon using this machines, it really challenges their kind of resistance training fitness paradigm. So I'm gonna tackle all three of those points individually first starting with ignorance. I'm just gonna do this with a quote by the late great resistance training machine inventor Arthur Jones. Ignorance we can deal with. Stupidity, well, that's genetic. You can't deal with it. Now I'm kind of using that clip and like tongue in cheek and I wouldn't be as hard as he's kind of saying that but if you guys don't know who he is you know, he's the one that essentially created and founded the modern day kind of fitness bodybuilding machine through his Nautilus company. Uh, he was a modern day kind of genius. He was very outspoken, but in his time, he was defending the same kind of sediments where people were looking at his resistance training machines, not considering the context and the, really the words he's really saying and making this comparison, but people were really challenging his ideas that these machines could even be work could even work for people in building muscle compared to traditional means like barbells and free weights. And again, this was even despite the fact that his machine was producing results in individuals within the context again of what he was specified it was used for. 
Now at first glance, if someone were to look at a total gym or a sliding bench trainer, I'm, I would admit I'm definitely ignorant to kind of what it was capable and what it can do, because uh, it just looks like a board with wheels on an incline. So to anyone who's never tried it and visually compares it to say a 90 pound set of dumbbells, it's pretty easy to not fully appreciate the potential these machines offer. But again, I'm gonna quote Arthur Jones again, because I found another practical point that relates to what we're getting at. What does a barbell do? It provides resistance against movement powered by muscular contraction. That was him comparing a barbell to a free weight machine and on the surface, they essentially kind of do the same thing. What does a total gym do? It can do the exact same application. It can provide resistance against your body's own musculature acting against it. And in the case of a sliding bench trainer, this resistance can come in the form of the manipulation of body weight on the machine, even ways you can position yourself in the machine uh, and or adding external weight. And so yes, we can make exercises relatively easy or low intensity or extremely hard and high intensity. Uh, the biggest misconception, which I think relates later to a misunderstanding I'll get into, is that you can't adequately load these machines. If you guys have watched my channel or done it yourself, you guys know you can find very creative and unique ways to stress essentially any body part in ways that would really get to you to like a three or six rep max on a given exercise. So to me, the primary ignorance I see very often is that these machines, at least at first glance, don't offer any decent resistance or stress to the muscles. And this is of course a valid concern because if something is not stressful to the muscle, growth will be slow to possibly non-existent. And obviously you can see here, it's looking at my face, you can see I'm definitely under stress. And I can tell you from first accounting that you guys can know from yourself that you can find a lot of ways to really stress and heavily load your musculature. Now moving into misunderstanding, I think the primary misunderstanding that people here either watching my channels or if I'm saying things like this is a good, great tool for resistance training is people automatically think I'm talking about this is a great tool for pure strength training. Yes, of course you can definitely, like I said, get to like three to six rep max exercises on this machine. But if you're looking at things of like pure strength training to really do things that are like high intensity with low repetitions in that regard, then yeah, I'm gonna agree. Like there's probably better ways of doing that. And so yes, doing some power lifts with a squat rack and a barbell or free weights, you know, squatting, benching, deadlifting, mixing in some barbell rows to develop strength probably would be a better way to actually do some strength training. So I think it's a misconception when people hear me say these things like, yes, it builds strength and it's ideal, but there's a certain context I'm kind of getting into. So no, I'm not saying that this can and should replace traditional strength training if your goal is to maximize strength development within your body. So when I say things like a Saudi bench trainer is a superior form of resistance training, what I'm saying is it's superior within the proper context. And with that, what I'm talking about is the vast majority of people I know, meet, or have worked with who are looking towards resistance training for exercise are by and large doing so for a form of exercise that can build aesthetic strong muscles, has a low learning curve, is efficient with their time and is easily accessible, not just in availability, but also in their state of life. And a total gym checks all these boxes. What I think people have a hard time kind of grasping is how a total gym does this, given how different it appears on the surface compared to modern day bodybuilding, which is why in a recent video, I've talked about how many people have been doing something to this effect. And I kind of dubbed this a new wave of bodybuilding in a way approaching muscular development and aesthetics. That's not the traditional going to the gym, just using free weights and machines. But just to be clear, the superiority of any exercise is subject to one's own personal interest and adherence to a particular mode of exercise. So if you don't like these things, they just don't work for you then it's really just not a good choice for you to jump in and do this type of training. And this leads me into my final point as to why people think a total gym is just a scam, it's for older people, or it's just for rehabilitation. And that's that a sliding men's trainer really challenges their fitness and resistance training paradigm. And it's kind of understandable because they've invested their time and energy through their training and learning about resistance training. And when they're presented with something that's a little bit different, they somewhat feel threatened at a possibility of maybe another way to getting to where they are. And I think this is more so the case if they find out this other way is more efficient and possibly more effective. And I've heard so many of you guys share stories that I experienced personally, where maybe you were coming off from going to the gym consistently. Also, you start working out at home, you start dabbling in this equipment and you're starting to see great results and people are seeing you asking what you're doing and they just can't believe that you're getting this great results, kind of equivocal or if not better to what you're getting in the gym from working out at home on what seems like a, just a gimmicky infomercial piece of equipment that they almost don't believe you. And they're just, like I said, just kind of in awe that you're promoting something that is 
Chuck Norris has been talking about for years in infomercials that are featured at 2 a.m. But really this shouldn't challenge anything because by training with the Total Gym, we aren't breaking away from what is already established and known about how our body adapts to stress and how we build muscle. We're simply just doing something different. Unfortunately, I think people get really stuck in a certain set paradigm of maybe they found something that kind of works for them and they stick with it or something they read or they think if they want to build muscle, let's say just bodybuilding in general, that there's a specific rep range, a set range, some sort of intensity, uh, maybe even a tempo they have to stick with. And I hear people from time to time comment saying like, you're going too fast, you're going too slow, you have too much weight, you don't have enough weight, you're breaking the exercise order rule, only to really know and realize that I'm talking with people that are either just starting or they've been so fixated on like one way of training and haven't experimented with anything else that they really just don't know any better. Or again, they kind of lose sight of the context I'm more or less discussing about in this channel and who this is really geared towards, but I'm focusing on building building and development of muscle in an efficient, effective way. We know there's a vast number of rep ranges and intensities, tempos, and modes of exercises that quote unquote work as long as adequate stress is placed upon the muscle. And I love this image by Brad Schoenfeld, who is the leading authority on muscular development or hypertrophy, simply showing you guys, at least through the specific uh, lens of like rep ranges, that a variety of rep ranges work for building muscles. It used to be thought of that like it was just a moderate rep range, like eight to 12. We now know you can build muscle through low, low weight, high intensities, or high, high repetitions, low intensities. Uh, the point is there's a, there's a whole myriad of ways of doing this, and that includes the idea of even modes of exercise. He himself has touched on the idea of resistance bands versus free weights versus any other form of resistance. The point is stress to the muscle with increased progressive loads will build muscle over time. There's plenty of ways I could dissect this even further, and I'm sure I'll get into it more in the future, but to emphasize the point, maybe I didn't stress enough in this video, is I'm definitely not judging anyone. I definitely think I had these preconceived notions when I looked at this equipment and I grew up, you know, seeing Chuck Norris videos. I was still going to the gym. I, know, I knew what a sliding bench trainer was. Uh, granted, I think in like 2010, I did buy my first sliding bench trainer for my house, but even then I wasn't fully convinced about what it could actually do uh, and its versatility and effectiveness. So I'm just kind of passionately just kind of sharing what I've been discovering through, again, exclusive use of using this as my primary form of resistance training uh, and just kind of comparing it to what I've been doing in the gym my whole life. So a lot of you guys have shared very similar stories. So I'm just trying to converting people, just kind of sharing this passionately as another option, really. I'm not saying this is you know the best. I'm not saying it's the thing everyone has to do. I'm just putting it out there for people to kind of experiment and again, find at least another option. At the very least, it's something you can supplement in your house. So if you don't feel like going to the gym one day, you can do this for a couple times per week. So I think it's also kind of a good caveat to that. So that's it, you guys. Please share your uh, comments down below and your experiences because I know um, I, I've been reading them for a while. Maybe some people haven't seen them. But any questions, comments, feedback, let me know, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you guys for watching.